Well, James, you'll be gone, won't you? Yes, indeed. You'll be gone. Be You're gonna be gone too. Well, y'all are welcome to come, the little girls. We're gonna have a special needs church service for um for our special needs friends, and we're gonna have spaghetti. And um, if y'all want to come and help or just hang out, really, it's nice for them to have people to talk to and make new friends and stuff like that. But you know, anyone's welcome. But we're gonna have a spaghetti dinner. So if you know someone with special needs or just like a family, you know, because the whole family's invited, let us know. And um, we're going to have bingo and we're going to have show and tell. So you bring, and you girls, y'all might like that. Bring something you're proud of and you can show it off. But yes, that's going to be hamburger hat. Hamburger hat. Hamburger hat. <laughs> yes. Yep. That's going to be 5 o'clock Thursday. If you want to donate or anything, we're, we'll have food covered and stuff. But, um... You know, we can always use like little bingo prizes, things like that, if you want to contribute. And thank you for those joining with us on the live stream. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just uh, leave them, we'll get back with you. Um, also have, okay, as a pastor, I've been slacking. Uh, I still need to sign us up for the 4th of July parade. Can we still sign up? I believe, I believe so. They, they put something out much longer. So. Yes. Yes. Uh, and y'all are all oh, welcome to join and walk with us. It's going to be fun. We'll have um, a great float. And we are looking forward to Riverfest, as always. Uh, that's in September, a few months ahead. So, just something to look forward to. Have to go. Let's see. That being said, so today we're going to take a break from our regular scheduled programming. Um, today we're going to have a message on Father's Day, celebrating fathers. Uh, and <coughs> we have a lot in the room today. Uh, so I hope y'all enjoy it. This message is also for people that have a father. Everybody, okay? Uh, so I hope you enjoy today. Um, now, starting out, I could just talk uh, for my illustration about statistics, you know, bashing fatherhood and everything else, you know, as you always see on the news. Uh, but enough people do that nowadays. Uh, today I want to start by reflecting on the God-instilled uh, method of teaching. Um, that fathers have, and hopefully that I'll have uh, as I continue to be um, a teacher as a pastor. So I've really been blessed with four father figures growing up, and all four of them in this room right now. So um, saying this, I've learned a lot from each and every father figure in this room. Um, growing up, uh, I think uh, to my original three, I recently had a, a wonderful addition to uh, Happy Father's Day to you. Um, but with this. Uh, Papa, Dad, Daryl, I, I learned a lot from growing up, uh, working on cars and things of that nature. And as I was thinking about to, uh, today's lesson, I was thinking about how they taught me over the years, about machinery and things of that nature. I'm still not good at it, so don't ask me to fix your car. I still get uh, my Papa to do it. But the way that I always learned how to do something, I remember I would always first look out the window, all right, whenever something went wrong. And I would watch them get frustrated. They'd probably say words they shouldn't say when they said this finger. Hit themselves with a wrench, things of that nature. Um, but I would look out the window and I would watch. And then as things went on, um, I ended up on the porch. And I moved closer. I moved closer. Um, eventually I'm beside the car and I'm asking, what you doing? And they're like, leave me alone. <laughs> well, Daryl, I'm not kidding. <laughs> then the next time, they would get me to hold the ratchet or the wrench or whatever they're working with. And then eventually you have the holy grail of all father-son moments that ask you to actually tighten the bolt. And you get excited. <laughs> and then you mess it up. And then you're back to ground zero. Right. Uh, it seems that every father has this method of teaching instilled within them. To progressively more and more and more show their children how things are done. And this is probably because their father did the same thing. Or whatever father figure that they had in their life showed them how to do something progressively. Today we're going to look at a biblical example of this uh, teaching method. And we're probably going to talk about a guy you've never heard of. I like to be unique sometimes. Okay? His name's Jehonah Dab. All right. All right. All right. So, Jehonadab, he was the son of uh, Rechab, and he was an early member of the Rechabites, 
a nomadic clan. Now, if you're wondering uh, what nomads are, they're people that travel from place to place. All right. Uh, so, if you would turn with me to Second Kings, ten, fifteen through thirty-one. <sighs> <laughs> I'm crazy to hold my eyes out for Second Kings, what? 10, 15, 31. Now, you haven't seen me in the Old Testament much, but today's going to be the Old Testament heavy. So. Second Kings, what? And it's 10, 15. That's page 205. And the yellow Bible. I cringe so hard my eyebrows start switching. What? I cringe so hard my eyebrows start switching. Oh, man. That's great. Okay. Second Kings 10, 15. It's page 205 in the other Bible. So I'll read this and we'll talk a little bit about it as we go. So, as we um, are starting out, we're in the middle of different dynasties okay, in Israel. Um, just a little bit of background about these dynasties. It's basically divided into two, uh, two eras. You have good kings and you have bad kings. Almost like we would, you have good presidents, and then you got the one we got now. All right. So, yeah, not good. All right. But you have good kings and bad kings. So, Second Kings ten fifteen. And when he was departed thence, he lighted Jehonadab the son of Rechab, uh, Rehab, coming to meet him, and he uh, saluted him and said to him, "It is thine heart right as my heart is with thy heart." And Jehonadab answered, "It is." If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took uh, up to him the chariot. And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord, so that he made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, Samaria is another word for Israel at that time, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria till they had destroyed him according to the saying of the Lord. And he spake to Elijah. All right. We'll keep reading as we go. But... Um, this character that you see in Jehu, he was a good king. All right, um, he was coming in a time, uh, a time where he was needed. I don't know if y'all ever heard of the King Ahab. He was an evil king uh, before Jehu, and this king was essentially living up to his God-given um, purpose. Basically, abolished all the idols in Israel, and there was plenty of idols at this time. Uh, of a false god called Baal. Now, before you read this and take it to heart and start smiting people who don't worship our God, all right? We just know uh, this is a narrative. It records what happened in this time. The context is crucial. Now, one thing that Old Testaments do beautifully, though, is they talk about the attributes of God. In this story, where we see that the prophets of Baal are basically annihilated, wiped off the face of the planet. Uh, this story tells us of God's righteousness, it tells us of His holiness, and at the end of the day, it tells you that God is a jealous God. He does not want God, other gods before Him. Jehu and Jehonadab are called to purge Israel of all these false gods. And Jehonadab is a man of integrity who acts when he is called to act. Uh, this immorality had infected Israel and was left over from these prior kings, uh, Amri and his son Ahab. Now, with this narrative in mind, all right, so that false gods are purged, hold on to that thought, and we'll get back to it in a minute. Before we go uh, further, let's talk about what happens when uh, a father doesn't leave a good legacy. He leaves a bad legacy. Uh, let's look at the kings who preceded Jehu. Uh, let's look at the ki uh, these kings. First of all, starting with Amri. Uh, if you would, turn just a, pe a few... Pages back to 1 Kings 16. 1 Kings 16, 26. So this is the telling the reign of Amri. This is Ahab's father, and he is considered a bad king. Okay? So starting at 1 Kings 16, 26. This is Amri, uh, Amri. It says, For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord of Israel to anger with their vanities. 
Now the rest of the acts of Amri, which he did, and his might uh, that he shewed, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Amri slept with his fathers, uh, talking about God, and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab and his son reigned in his, uh, reigned in his stead. I'm going to go down just a little bit. No, so, yeah, 27, and it talks about how these were the worst than any act seen before a king before him. okay? So, then you go down a little bit further, and we see his son Ahab. And his son Ahab, it says, And Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that was before him. And it came to pass as if it was a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, and the son of Nebat, and he took to his wife Jezebel, you've heard of her before, uh, the daughter of Ethbel, king of uh, Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. And it continues on to talk about all the evil things that Ahab did. Okay? That's a lot to say this. Amri was evil. Okay? And who did he raise? He raised an evil child who was even worse than him. Sin basically had a, infected this whole dynasty. And eventually we see God uh, purge Israel of this kingdom. So, here's, uh, here's what we need to remember from this. Present, fa present fathers, when they teach evil, children turn out evil. They turn out bad, sinful, depraved. Absent fathers, when gone, let the world teach their children. They let the world teach their children evil. Either way, children are at a loss when a father doesn't do what a father is supposed to do. Sin infects like a virus. Let's turn to Romans 5.12 uh, 5, for a second. Twelve. <clears throat> it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. That word passed is reflecting something almost like a virus, like a sickness. It's passed down and it gets worse and worse and worse as the ages go through. Okay? So sin is passed and affects far faster than COVID-19 ever did. Okay? Rome, uh, sin is a virus. Now, let's talk about the fathers in the room. The good legacies that's left behind. On the other hand, you got Jehonadab. We see Jehonadab's children um, appear in Jeremiah 35, if you would turn there. Jeremiah 35. And I'll slow down and sit, uh, sit here for a little while. So we have kings, evil kings that passed on uh, evil children to the world. Now we have a man who loved God, who honored God. In Jeremiah 35, chapter 35, that is. It says, The word which came into Jeremiah unto the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, the king of Judah, saying, Go into the house of the Rechabites, which we, we just talked a little bit about them, and speak unto them, and bring them to the house of the Lord, and to one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took uh, Jezniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of uh, Habazaniah, Habazaniah, and his brethren, all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, and the sons of uh, Igalio, a man of God, which was by the chamber of princes, which was above the chamber of Messiah, the son of Shalom, and the keeper of the door. And I set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, Rechabite, pots full of wine and cups, and said unto them, Drink ye wine. Now here's what I want to pay attention to. But they said, We will drink no wine, for Jonadab, the son of uh, Re Rechab, our father commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither your sons forever. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all the days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus we have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, and all that he has charged us, to drink no wine all our days. We our wives, our sons, and our daughters, nor to build houses for to dwell in, uh, neither we have vineyard, nor field, nor seed, but we have dwelt in tents, and have obeyed, 
and done according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. So what is this saying? Jehonadab essentially was so fed up with the idols that he made an oath that for the rest of his days, for the rest of his family's days, his family will essentially serve God and that they will be nomads, that they'll travel around, that they'll never drink wine, that they'll stay away from all these different things so that they can never get ensnared in the path of idols again. Now here's the amazing thing about this story. This is his descendants. Um, this is 254 years after Jehovah's death. They're still following in his ways. They're still doing exactly as he, he had commanded uh, his sons and their sons and their sons and so forth. Now let me put this into perspective. This is 254 years after Jehonadab had done all this and had uh, made this oath. Do y'all know how old our nation is? No, 247. Okay? 247 years. This is still older than our entire nation. And they're still following exactly in what they were taught. Exactly to the word, to the letter. Uh, to put this into perspective, in human terms, that's a long time, 254 years. In 247 years, the U.S. has declared, 11, uh, declared war 11 times, and that's not including Vietnam, the Korean War, or Iraq War. Okay? So, America has been at war about 14 times, at this, uh, and to put that into perspective. The U.S. Uh, went from a nobody to a world power in that time. America has gone through 10 generations in the same amount of time. We now have cars, phones, and internet since that time. And we have nearly reached national moral bankruptcy in that time. But guess who didn't? The Hunter Dad family. And it was all in the role uh, because of the role of a good father, the Hunter Dad. 254 years was a long time to act stupid. But we find Hunter Dad's family in this time saying, For Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, our father commanded us, saying, and they list off what he said, and followed it to the letter. This is what Hank Williams calls a family tradition. <laughs> During this time of cooperation with King Jacob, Jehonadab takes drastic measures to ensure his family never again falls into the trap that those before him have uh, fell into. They become a nomadic tribe, they take vows to abstain from things, and you see, they recognized, Jonah that recognized that generational loyalty to God had to start somewhere. It had to start with the role of a father, then the mother, and then the children, and then the grandchildren. It keeps on going. He set parameters. He held himself accountable and loved God with all that he had, as a godly father should. This sounds a lot like Proverbs 22.6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, 254 years, that's a long time, he will not depart from it, including generations. Fathers, be like Jehonadab. As I look to the con congregation, I already see a group of Jehonadabs, great fathers in this room. Build an airtight legacy of descendants who love God. And as you can see, sometimes it means being gracefully strict. See, Jehonadab went way over the line to make sure that it's never eased off taking drastic measures. And when the world tries to tell your kids that something you know is wrong, shut them up. Stand between them. Shield your children from ungodliness. A good godly legacy is founded on a good godly foundation. Fathers are builders and fathers fathers are builders and fathers laid that foundation. Take the example of our Heavenly Father who laid a foundation. The chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ, that we stand on today, that we stand in. Our foundation, he, he secured a legacy of righteousness and those that he adopts. We are adopted into the family of the best father, the holy father, the righteous father. If you would, turn with me to Ephesians 2.19. Ephesians 2.19. It says, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with saints, 
in the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto the holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So, I'm not going to be long-winded today, but I'm going to charge everyone in this room. First of all, I'm going to start with the fathers. My message uh, for Mother's Day was a lot more gentle than, uh, than this charge would be. There are some strong men in this room. Turn with me to 1 Timothy 6.11. This will be your charge for today. Something for you to hold on to and grasp. 1 Timothy 6.11. First Timothy 6, 11 through 12, it says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and have professed a good profession before many witnesses. This is my charge to Father today. Fight the good fight, cling to righteousness, and the good things of God. Make this mission a skeleton framework as you continue on throughout life. Now, we're in an age to where the world is telling that fathers don't have to be strong. Okay? That fathers, um, that they're called to be uh, a lot more graceful. Um, a lot of times you hear toxic masculinity. Some, sometimes that, that can be the case. But fathers are to be a strong person. 1 Timothy 5 8, this is evidence. But if any provide not for his own, especially for, uh, for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Fathers are called to a very high standard. Don't listen to the world. If you're a parent, if you don't parent, the world will. And y'all have done well. Be strong, but balanced with grace and love. Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how to uh, answer every man. Be strong, guys. To children, we got to stop making it hard for our dads. I know I did, for all my father figures. Okay? Exodus 20, 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And your father beat thee with a belt. <laughs> <laughs> or as a coffee case of glass water. <laughs> Leviticus 29. For everyone that curses, curses his father or mother shall surely be put to death. Oh, wrong one. All right, Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou may live it long on the earth. Listen to our parents. You are, uh, on a serious note, the good children do two things for their father. First of all, being a good child, it pleases God. Colossians 3, 20. Children, obey your parents in all things. This is well-pleasing unto the Lord. It pleases God when, when we are good children. Also, the Bible says, whether the dads agree or not in this room, children are a reward to, uh, to fathers. Okay? Psalm 127.3 Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit, of the, uh, the fruit of the womb is His reward. Children are a reward to fathers. And lastly, a charge to wives. No one escapes today. <laughs> Titus 2, 4 through 5. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, and the word of God be not blessed. With all that said, thank you, uh, fathers, for being who you are. Your work is important. You are the front lines um, of our nation, of the family, the head of the household. And um, responsible a lot of times for the spiritual well being of the children. So I just want to thank y'all and tell y'all to keep on the good work that y'all do. Fight the good fight. That's my charge for you today. And I'm very thankful for each and every one of y'all. So happy Father's Day to y'all. Um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. And I'm very thankful uh, for all the Father figures uh, in this room, for all the fathers. Um, it's amazing that uh, that they're part of your plan, Father, um, 
for the, uh, the well-keeping of family, uh, for spiritual well-being, and I can't thank you enough uh, for the work that they've done in my life and the lives of everyone in this room. Uh, watch over us as we leave here today, Father, and we celebrate our Father. Ask us all in the holy, precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Thank you to the last speaker for joining with us today. I hope y'all go out and enjoy uh, those in your life today on this wonderful Father's